I feel like I've been coming on this camera looking in any type of way and it shows. <gasps> I had to add a bit more um, stoke to this because it came out a little bit too much cream for me. I like, I like coffee with a splash of cream and not the other way around. But today we're gonna be talking about something that I have been avoiding. <laughs> avoiding like the plague. What? Just because you know, I feel like at the time, which was a year ago, over a year ago, there there are receipts to prove it. At the time, there was just a lot going on in the background, and I didn't want what was happening in the background to our like YouTube community to end up at the forefront. But I do think it's an important conversation to have. I do think it's something, especially moving forward with this channel and kind of just telling you guys what's been going on a little bit and just in the future, just so we're all on the same page. Anywho, I'm not ready just yet for the conversation because like, I haven't even had my coffee. My eyes are barely are barely open. The dogs aren't fed. So let's get that knocked out of the way. Um, knocked out of the way? Is that? <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. My brain is not thinking. Let's let's get some of this stuff done. Let's let my brain wake up, um, and and then we'll actually sit down and have a really um, important conversation. Good morning, Bandit. Hello. He already knows food bowls are being made. I promise you'll find this little floofer anywhere food can be found. It's so funny. I love that our pantry is just like half pantry, and then everything down here is just all dog related. You'll hear Bronson. Oh. Yeah, good morning. Hello, good morning to you. See, everybody knows when the food when the food comes out. <laughs> He's so chatty. All right, dog bowls are all done. We just have to give them a minute so these ones can soak. I have no idea why, but this is Smokey's favorite spot. Hello, good morning, princess. She loves hanging out over in this, this little area of the house, especially a lot of times if she's not sitting here like looking onward, she tucks herself all the way over there and sits over there. It's just her little private corner. Good morning, Todd. We haven't seen you yet. Hello. Okay, baby. Wow, you little attention seeker. Todd, where'd you go? Hello. Hello, Todd. Good morning. Hello, babies. Good morning, Chip Chip. Good morning. He's not feeling um, his his best, so me and Chip are trying to avoid each other just a little bit. With my rheumatoid arthritis and being on methotrexate and all that stuff, my immune system is decreased. So we're just putting a, a little bit of space. We're not like completely clear in the house because we also don't know if it's just like allergies or whatever. Lucy Lou, good morning, hello. Lucy is like the biggest fan of the outdoors, like of any of our dogs. She's the one that loves to be out here. So throughout the day, she like comes and goes and comes and goes and comes and goes. But the good thing is like we built our own mini fence. It's just temporary because we're actually gonna get like a, a nice one um, installed, but it's just a little mini any fence because like our house is on an acre of land so we don't think the little ones have any business going out further in the property so that way we can just keep an eye on everybody right in the front so chip just built this one that just kind of wraps around like our our porch and our little fireplace but if you look a little bit beyond that you might see another fence that just got installed and like this one we actually had like a company come out and do it anywho all right so we have officially kicked off breakfast time, morning walks, and all of that. So I'm gonna get all the bowls cleaned and everything else, and, and we're gonna kinda kick off the morning. This is where it gets a little bit hectic, so I'm gonna put the camera up, but I will visit you guys after this coffee is done. <laughs> so we already ate two or three of the meals, um, and Chip called dibs on this one, which is the Hawaiian-style shredded chicken. So I get to choose between the Tuscan baked salmon and tomato caper sauce, or the honey butter grilled chicken. Um, I guess let's do this one. Let's do the honey butter grilled chicken. I've never had this one before, but it looks so good. So this is what it's looking like right now. And it is 
Honey butter grilled chicken with rosemary roasted potatoes and Parmesan broccoli. So for this one, you have to take the little cup out. So we'll take this out and then just take a fork. Oh, it already smells. Oh, it already smells so good. And then we'll just go put it in here and press the number two we're off. So while that is in the microwave cooking, I also want to thank Factor for sponsoring today's video because you guys know like me and Factor, we're tight. We're like this. We're two peas in a pod because basically they have like saved me through so many busy days, but also on a lot of my flight attendant trips. I just get like so busy and then it takes so much out of you to try to meal plan, grocery shop, cook all the food, meal prep all the food, clean up all the dishes and all of that. It's a lot. So Factor just basically eliminates all of that. They also have lots of meals that fit different lifestyles, whether that's calorie smart, keto, chef's choice, vegan. Oh, there she is. See, all it takes is two minutes. That's it, 120 seconds and you're done. Oh, I wish y'all could smell this. And I mean, the other really cool thing about Factor is the fact that you can like stick with your, your nutrition and all of your health goals. Let me get the sauce. They just make it super easy for you. And that's one of the reasons I'm absolutely obsessed with them. All right, I'm gonna open the little, the little sauce can, the honey butter sauce. I gotta give it a, a taste test first. Oh, oh my goodness, that is good. Here, I'll, I'll show you the pour. I'll, I'll try to be like the best vlogger I can possibly be. I got my, my fork and my knife. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything. I think it's that Parmesan broccoli. Something is really like smelling good, good. All right, got a, a big old bite here. Don't mind my really bad spray tan hands. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This meal also has 32 grams of protein, so they ain't skimping either, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna slide this off to the side before I devour the whole thing. And if I've got broccoli in my teeth, collectively, as a big old family, we're gonna be ignoring that. <laughs> but if you guys want to join the Factor family, like myself, you are in luck because right now, when you head to factor75.com and use code catnesbit 50 you'll get 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Lucy, look what I got. Can you sit? Oh, here you go. Look how fun is that? New toys, new toys. You having so much fun? Look at that little tail wag. No, oh, yeah, you're gonna show them how much fun you're having. <laughs> so while my um, skincare just kind of soaks in, Chip and I decided that we're gonna go ahead and um, try the the fruit roll up thing. So I just have like a, a paper plate down here. Okay, Chip, you can choose between strawberry, tropical, tie-dye, or blue, blue raspberry. Uh, all of them? I saw this before. Yeah, I think that's, that's how I saw it at first, like the classic. It's kind of silly that like, they don't put a little bit more paper so you can actually unwrap it all the way. But like as a kid, like a lot of times, you would just wrap it around your finger and just suck on it. It's like a weird. See, this one did the same thing, it's like stuck. This one has an eyeball. I actually have an eyeball tattoo. So here's our little fruit rollies. Here's our big ol' ice cream tub. So I'm just gonna do like this much. And then you're supposed to like wrap it. A little bit of ice cream came out, but I think it'll be all right. And then it's supposed to like harden. You leave it for just a couple seconds and then it's supposed to harden this part and create like a little, a shell. Here, you can hold that. I get mine. Mmm, ice cream is good. It's Bluebell. It's Bluebell. Okay, ready? Mmm. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. It is actually pretty good. And weird. Like the gummy part, it's still with like on the outside. I'm like in my teeth, but no, it's actually pretty good. We have an ice cream in Germany, it's actually pretty much tasting exactly like this. Really? Mm -hmm. It's like perfect when you just need like a little something sweet. No, I had one and one's, one's perfect. <laughs> Good? Better than Which the one? red? Yeah, now we have to figure out how to. <laughs> Do 
you want the tropical one? Yeah. <laughs> I was screaming it. <clears throat> I think this one, the strawberry, is the best one. Sorry. <laughs> it's allergies. Just call it. Uh, so Allie got me this, the Halo Glow for my birthday because I can't get it anywhere near me. It's completely sold out. Shade Fair. Um, and she said that this will probably match my spray tan. So I'm gonna give this a whirl today. So I'm just gonna do light makeup, especially if my sister's gonna dye my hair later. I don't want like a full face. She also bought me this as well because I told her this was another thing I've been wanting to try, but it's just been sold out everywhere. It's a dupe for whatever sunscreen she uses. I was hoping it was gonna be a dupe for the Tula, for the Tula Protect and Glow because this is the one that I have on and y'all see that glow. Like even before I put this on, like y'all see that glow. It's just so pretty under your makeup and it just gives like your skin like this youthful glow. I'm like obsessed. Like I swear to God, I'm gonna be like this in my casket and y'all are gonna have to pry it out of my hands. And I was hoping because this is the Woe Glow, but I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I feel like this is much closer to the Versed sunscreen. I do love though the, the e.l.f. Holy hydration. I just put it in, in here because otherwise you have to like scoop it. Ugh. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Why is it so tight? <laughs> Close this. Okay, well, y'all are just gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to take my word um, that you have to use your finger to scoop it out. That's why like, I like to put it um, in here, but lately I have been trying just so many new skincare products. So I'm I'm still dabbling across the board, but anywho, all right, let's go ahead and use this. I don't know, do you need to shake it or something? Probably not, probably not. I did look and the applicator's like a, a doe foot, um, which I thought was interesting. I also don't know. I didn't use a primer. Should I use a primer? Too late, we're in it now. So I guess we're gonna see without a primer. But this like basically says, wear alone, under or over makeup. Over makeup, interesting. I feel like glowy skin is so in. Like before it was like all about matte. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Cute. But now I feel like it's all about like that glow, which is so funny because like glowy skin is actually way more youthful. The more youthful you are, the more like oily, um, acne prone skin. Not everybody, but like just as a general assumption. I mean, basically it always goes, whatever the trend is, just know that as soon as that trend dies, we're going 180. <laughs> I feel like that happens with the presidency uh, as well, but that's a talk for another time. Cause even like, the sad beige, which I'm still hanging out in the sad beige. I love my beige, I love my black. Black will always be the color of my life. It's my favorite color, it's the color of my soul. Black will never go out of style for me, that's first and foremost, but I do love beige, especially in my home decor. My mind goes a million miles an hour. I have so much to do, my schedule is always packed full of stuff. So I like my house just to be my center of peace. So I don't like the bright colors. I don't like a lot of stuff. I like minimalism. I like the neutrals. Ooh, she is pretty in combination, like sh in combination with my Tula sunscreen. Like this is a glow. <laughs> what was I talking about earlier? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So after the, like the sad beige trend, like once that like died out, we have gone like 180 of that. And now we're like bright colors, maximalism, like, Twirls, swirls, stuff everywhere, creative design. It's just funny how like trends like that work, which is why I generally just, I like a good trend and I like every now and again to like switch up my stuff and just like seem like I'm like part of the Gen Z group. Like I'm giving Gen Z, even though I'm definitely a millennial. <laughs> my brows basically just be steady looking like this. I can't do anything to them. I can't change the shape, nothing. This is just how my brow hair grows. It's always grown like this. I've never had like exciting brows to be able to sh like shape and change or nothing like, but on the flip side of that, I don't have to worry about going and getting waxes or trims or anything. So honestly, I should just shut up and like count my blessings because I'm high maintenance in, in other areas. But anyways, there's the brow. <laughs> I'm just putting uh, mascara on the four lashes I have. <laughs> Ta-da, that actually looks really Really bad, let's not tell all that. I know there are so many lash serums and stuff to like grow your lashes, but like, do I wanna do all that? I just don't, 
I don't know if I can be bothered with all that right now. Especially because I don't even usually rock my natural lashes. Like if I were to choose one makeup item that like I'm going, I'm going to the grave with next to my two <laughs> sunscreen, uh, it would be my, my lash strips. It's kind of funny, I'm not gonna do them today, but I need to jump in the shower after I, I get my hair dyed, anywho. Okay, Stanine. Were you waiting on me? Look at that cute little face, hello cutie. Okay, so <laughs> the dogs are probably gonna be um, coming and going as they hello, hello, as they please. <laughs> Just gonna make it a little bit funny, hello. Oh, thank you for the geezy. But anywho, let's go ahead and sit down and chat. Um, I do want to say though, like, I have to choose some of my words carefully here. So if y'all see me like pausing and thinking, it's because I'm trying to word everything, not strategically, but there's just some things that happened that I can't mention and I don't want to mention. Um, there's other people involved and things like that and it's not my business to share. So there's definitely gonna be some things I'm going to leave out of this video, but honestly, I don't feel like it's it's needed for you to get the idea that I'm gonna be trying to come across. I hope I'm saying this right. I'm telling y'all, like this is a hard one for me, which is also why I deleted this video a year ago. You guys might remember Miss Fly with Stella, which I already know. I already know as soon as I bring her up, people are gonna be like, where is Stella? Where is Stella? Which I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. You guys might remember it was, and this is how I know it's been over years because over a year ago, she was actually, it was her second to last video that she posted and she had come in to Dallas on a layover and like we hung out and you know, like we did film a little bit, like there was a little bit of like content filming, but honestly, like it was just like more hanging out, two friends sitting there having conversations about life and behind the scenes and getting deep and things. But one of the conversations that did happen was about the social media policy because something that was going on behind the scenes around that time was that when we were actually furloughed, when the pandemic happened, the social media policy changed. And so we were all gonna have to learn to adapt to the new changes, learn the new changes, learn that like things have changed because you, you don't always first and foremost find out, which is why you really, really, really need to know your contract. I have screamed this like from the rooftops as a flight attendant, know your contract. But um, in the video that she had posted, that second to last video, Stella had mentioned that I was gonna be filming a video about the social media policy because I know she touched on it in that video, which was true, that, that was true. Um, I did film a video, but then, I deleted it. I just needed to make sure I was being transparent and being authentic to myself, but also understanding that some stuff doesn't need to be said on camera, you know, and, and some stuff can't be said on camera. So essentially why I'm filming this now is because on that Q and A that I did on my Instagram a few days ago, Somebody had popped up with a question. They said, I want to be a flight attendant, social media content creator. I don't know where to start, like where do I start? And I thought, and I was like, okay, well, two things. And the first and the most important is know your company and your airline's social media policy. And number two is put the camera up and just get started. There's so much room and so much space for everybody to succeed. Everybody's different, everybody's personality is different. What they do, their lifestyle, their background, there's so much differences. And I just feel like that's so unique to watch other people's channels who like, we might share this in common and we might share this completely different. And you know, our job is so interesting because it's not just a job, it's, it's a full lifestyle. And I think that's what really fascinates people because I, I have people tell me all the time on my channel that, you know, I love watching your content, even though I have no intention of being a flight attendant. I think it's just because the world of being a flight attendant is so fascinating. But also with that being said is I personally feel like as a community, when we win and when somebody succeeds, we all win, we all succeed. You know, somebody else's success, their growth, everything, that's a success for everybody and, and we're all winning together. But with that being said, we're also all losing together. So when somebody does something that they're not supposed to be doing or they're showing something that they're not supposed to be showing or something like that, we're all losing together when somebody gets in trouble. Like I said, this lifestyle is so different, it's so unique, it's so cool, it's so special, but we are also first and foremost a safety and security position. So it's like, you know, 
as, as people come onto the platform, I do understand there is this thing that everybody wants to do more, show more, say more, and things like that, but you just have to be careful because it's a very slippery slope on actually what you're allowed to do, say, and show. And that's why when, when somebody might accidentally cross that line, like we all fall when somebody falls. You have to know your social media policy and also understand that it's it's ever evolving. Because I've been a flight attendant, I'm on my seventh year of flying now, but uh, my sixth year for my current airline. And just in that time, how much social media has changed and developed and just even like the, the players in the game because like, I started doing this content almost almost five years ago, which is so crazy. It's so crazy it's been that long. I don't know, it just doesn't feel that long, especially with COVID straight in the middle of it. But also just in that time, like so much has changed on social media. When TikTok came onto the scene, like that was the biggest platform, still arguably one of the biggest platforms, if not the biggest platform. It's definitely the biggest to grow, and especially back then. I was on it for like a brief time and I, and I really enjoyed it, but then I realized that TikTok, because all eyes were on it, it was good and bad. Like people were growing at a fast rate. I mean, I was only on it very briefly and I had already grown to like 70,000. And like, I love that there's so many flight attendants and so many content creators that grew like these huge platforms for themselves over there. But with that being said, because all eyes were over there, that also meant that all eyes were over there. And you know, a lot of people were, were getting a little bit in trouble and that's like the last thing I want to do. You know, I'm a content creator, but I am a flight attendant at first. And like, I never want to do anything that's going to overstep and like get me in trouble or also make the airline look bad or anything like that. And so, you know, that started making me really concerned um, about TikTok, and that's why I kind of had made the personal choice to like dial back and kind of like step a bit back off the platform, even though like from a social media perspective, like that was a big risk. I, I mean, that is a big risk because that was such a way to grow and is still to this day the fastest growing platform in my opinion. But also because I have built this family and this community over here, I didn't want to jeopardize that for this new app that, that may or may not stick around. Like you just didn't know. And so like, I like to do more TikTok content, but also you just have to be careful with what you're posting and that's why I feel like you know as somebody who has now been a content creator like in the flight attendant sphere for five years I do think like I have to use this platform for those that I inspire that want to do the same thing that I do to just be so smart use your common sense sometimes you know like when you're when you're really like working and you've got passengers on board, like you should not have your camera out. And I know those are just some basic things and it definitely gets a lot deeper than that. But I am inspiring you to do this. Like I love that for you and I hope you reach every goal you've ever wanted to obtain out there. And, and I really do and I'm rooting for every single one of you. But I just want y'all to be smart because like I've said, when we win, we all win. But when we lose, we all lose. Like I said, the social media policy is ever changing and you have to make adaptions to that. And I don't know what's to come down the road. And just because I've been so blessed to be able to do this for, for the time that I've been able to do it and you know, and just share with you guys so much about how cool this job is. And sometimes I'm not cool, but mostly how cool and how much I love it and how much I think like you guys love it and stuff. And so, you know, I, I love doing that, but there may someday come a day where it's like, okay, no more. And so that's why I do think this conversation is important. And I do think it's also important to share to those that may want to do this, that just be so smart about the content you're posting and the things that you're saying and the things that you're showing because it's not a normal job. Also, I do kindly ask that you guys don't speculate, especially in my comment section down below. Like, please don't because I promise whatever y'all think happened behind the scenes is definitely not what happened behind the scenes. You probably would get it wrong completely and I would just ask that you kindly don't do that because it's really not nice and there's specific reasons. I'm not bringing up any any specific instance as to what happened or or anything like that or name dropping or something because like I promise y'all will not get it right. Now also with that said, I already know probably my comment section for anybody that hasn't even gotten to this point are like, where is Stella? Like I've gotten so many of those comments. Like um, I know Ali has as well as probably other people have also gotten them. And I I know it's just coming from a good place. I, I really do. I know that like Stella just is such a big personality. She was such a huge 
person on this platform and she had been on it for years and years and years and so i know like she really made an impact she had a huge audience and then she made the personal decision to choose to step away from it and i feel like i know this is not the answer a lot of you are going to want but it's the only one i'm willing to give you and that is that when somebody makes the conscious effort to step away from their social media we have to respect that and we have to respect their privacy and their choice in doing that and i know it might be sad it might upset you or whatever it is but you do have to respect that they want that privacy in their life and that they have made those choices for whatever reason that they have have chosen to do that I, I know a lot of the comments are also probably just thinking like it, it, it may be like yeah yeah it's okay that she stepped away but we just want to make sure she's okay and, and yes she she is okay um, if anything like terrible were to have happened I, I promise y'all would hear about it like we would definitely be posting about it um, that was not the case it was it was her decision to step away and whatever her reasons behind that are hers and hers only to discuss and if she wants to do that great and if she doesn't also great and we just have to respect that so when she's ready to come back she's going to and if she never comes back then that is her right to do so and again we just have to respect that anyways that's basically what I wanted to share I don't know if you guys have noticed in the last year my content changing a little bit I I feel like mine mine didn't need to change so much because a lot of my content was sit down content a lot of amazon hauls travel hauls things like that um but a lot of like my vlogs i i kind of turned them a little bit more inwards a little bit more personal into who i am my life my stuff what i enjoy doing especially on my layovers and things like that and you know i just want to do my best to try to stay as authentic um, to myself, but also have to respect my my airline and the guidelines and things like that So hopefully I built enough of a community and a family here that if my content ever did need to like up and sporadically Change that you guys would hang out and stick with me. But uh, at this point in time, there's there's, <laughs> there's No plan of doing that right now, but yeah, you just don't know what the future holds But I did think this was an important conversation to have especially after reading um, that comment, which they probably didn't know it was gonna flood into all of this, but it was something I needed to talk about about anyways. It was something that's kind of been long overdue. I just wanted like the dust and um, a lot of the stuff to settle and a lot of the stress to kind of end that was like going on behind the scenes in, in a lot of our lives and stuff. But anywho, that is all. I put my my little black black on because I'm gonna head um, over to my sister's house. She did say she would dye my hair. Honestly, it was she was gonna do it anyways, but she did say it was okay. All right, picked one. I knew it was gonna be that one. He just will sit there just like that and just gnaw it until he can take all the stuffing out. So while my sister's at work, I'm actually gonna go run over to CVS. I forgot to get chips, uh, little protein drinks. So I'm gonna see if they have them over there because y'all, <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this. Fun fact about me, but I am the CVS queen. I love CVS. I am such a couponer at <laughs> CVS, like on the app. I've got a problem. Them. But anywho, I decided I'm gonna open these and take one for the road while I go over there. And I'm gonna do one of the one of the watermelon ones. Well, if you weren't sick, I, I'd give you a lick, but you're definitely getting your own. Do you want watermelon or mango? Oh, these these really do. I'm telling y'all, these really do just remind me of, of like my childhood. Like this. I would say hot Cheetos and cheese and then Piccadilly's, which if y'all don't know what a Piccadilly is, it's like a snow cone. We'd have like the snow cone stand in Grand Prairie. That's that's where I grew up. And there's a snow cone stand called like Tasty Ice and you get a snow cone and then they chop up pickles and put them on top and then put Kool-Aid powder. Oh my gosh, I'm like watering. And put Kool-Aid powder on top. So like this, the Piccadilly and hot Cheetos and cheese. Those three would be my childhood like summed up together. No, I don't think I like that. Good, more for me. <laughs> All right, so I got two things of these, and then I also got two packs of nails because it was spend $10 on nails, and then you get a $3 coupon back, and I wear these all the time anyway, so I just like to keep um, them in my stash, especially sometimes when they have a coupon going on. And this is the hair dye that I use, but my hair is so thick, I have to use two of them. Um, so this shade is just peppercorn, so it's like the um, blackest black. So this is my favorite. And these were also buy to get $4 back. And so then whenever you go to the app, you can like link up your card and I just go to the deals and rewards tab. And especially if I'm gonna be buying anything, I just look up and see if there's any coupons going on and you can just put add on to card. And sometimes I just add it onto card even if I don't know if I'm gonna actually get it or not. But even here, I didn't realize it, but I had apparently a $3 birthday one, but it doesn't expire until the 25th. 
So I'll have this one, I have 69 cents, and then um, the other ones will show up um, in just a little bit. But as you can see here, I have like $11.69 in um, extra rewards. So it's really, really cool, especially if you're gonna be shopping there anyways. All right, so since I last saw you, um, I took a quick like 30 minute nap, and then I've also been editing actually this <laughs> video I'm filming, which is a little funny, because I usually like wait until the video is finished so that I know how to like lay everything out, what I'm gonna do. But I have so much content for you this month, like so much stuff I'm putting together. So I'm trying to get it all like done and orderly especially before I have to fly because this month it's gonna be a lot of flying back to back to back to back. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and make chili mac. So normally we're Frito pie kind of place. We live in Texas, like Frito pie is it, but I figure we'll do something a little different. So I got some, some small shells, which normally when I do chili, like I don't mind the low sodium. I like hot, I like anything spicy. I'm a big spice fan. Chips, stomach is not. He used to love spice, but now it's just not thing anymore. So um, I didn't do the hot, we're just gonna do the low sodium. And then I got the the hot rotel, the pinto beans, and then the extra lean ground beef, and then also got some reduced fat uh, cheddar. Also we're gonna do a side of broccoli florets. It's kind of funny, this actually reminds me of one of the factor meals. <laughs> they have like a chili mac meal, and I'm, I'm even thinking, I'm like, I think the side on that meal is broccoli, which is funny enough. But anyways, that's what's gonna be for dinner tonight. Hopefully it's half as good as the factor one because that's actually like a really, really good meal. It's one of my favorites. So it's been maybe like two or three days since this video. I was editing it and then realized like I didn't film an outro because I completely forgot to take the camera to my sisters. But also uh, I woke up this morning with a sore throat. So <laughs> love that for me. I'm hoping it's just allergies, but I guess we're gonna see because I was actually planning on picking up a truck tomorrow. I was also supposed to take my math at truck site today. So now I'm gonna wait, maybe take it tomorrow and just see if I'm sick or not. <laughs> What a time to be alive. Anyways, hopefully I see you guys tomorrow on a fun, exciting trip. If not, um, I still have content to, to film and do from, from my house. Probably just a little bit more congested. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. Press that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye.